channel. Today we're going to talk about socialization. This is a big concern for new homeschoolers and also for people that are doubters in your life. I think most people think that homeschoolers just keep their kids at home, but that's not the case. When you take your kids grocery shopping or to the doctor or the dentist or the post office, they get to see how you interact with people, they get to interact. You can do things like co-ops or different kinds of clubs, things like that. So socialization can happen every day or any day. And also you're going to be socializing with each other. Now, it is important for kids to learn how to make friends and pick up on social cues. These are things that can be taught by going to the playground or going to co-op or whatever. Don't worry about socialization too much. If your kid is very outgoing and loves to be around people, then just add more extracurriculars in. Add more outside activities in, into your homeschool week. You don't need to worry too much about how to socialize your children. That's kind of the first thing people always say when they hear you're homeschooling, but it's probably going to end up being one of the least of your worries, honestly. So I made a list of ways to socialize your kid with places to take them. So the first is sports. A lot of states let you take and put your child in different sports or activities or classes the school has, even though you're homeschooling. So if your child loves to act or wants to learn how to sing or something, you can put them in school for just that one class. Homeschool kids are allowed to try out for sports teams, and a lot of schools have other clubs as well. I've seen robotics clubs or a crocheting club, chess club, coding club, all sorts of things. A drone club. And I don't know that you always have to stay in your school district. You might be able to go to other schools. For example, my town has three junior highs. So you might be able to go to different junior highs for classes as well. You just need to ask the school district and see what their rules are. If you don't want to go the school route, there's lots of sports teams outside of school. The only thing is I would try and find a non-competitive sports team. And what that means is that there, every kid gets equal amounts of time to play. I've seen some teams in my community where the kids aren't very good, have to sit on the bench the whole time. So that's that's demoralizing. And then the parents pay all that money and the kid doesn't get to play. Yeah, don't pick a team like that. Pick one where they want all the kids to improve and all the kids get to play. Dance classes are another great way to find socialization and friend opportunities for your kids. And dance classes, they have way more than ballet. They have tap, they've got swing, country. There's an iris dancing one a couple towns over from me. Square dancing, ballroom, all sorts of things. Community theater. Most communities have a theater that they want people in the community to try out and do plays. And if they don't want to try out, they could do things like be a stagehand or serve refreshments. There's lots of things you can do to get involved. You can do park play dates with friends or church members or other homeschoolers. A great way to find opportunities you and your family is to type in the town you're in. Go to Facebook and type in the town you're in. So if you're in town, Logan Town, type in Logan Town Homeschoolers in Facebook and if any are there, it'll pop up and you can join. And then you can see if there's any opportunities that you and your family would be interested in. You can also check towns around you as well because they often will have different opportunities. You can join a co-op. There are many different kinds from religious ones to secular to all day to four hours a day all sorts of kinds. You could even start your own homeschool co-op if you wanted. There probably will be fees associated with it because they have to rent out the places usually or pay fees for the classes. Something to keep in mind if you join a co-op is that you will probably be called upon to teach several classes. So if that's not something that interests you, maybe pass. Okay, check out your library. If your kids are younger, their libraries have story times and you don't have to just go to the library in your town, you can go to other towns too. Our libraries have all sorts of activities like reading to a dog or craft things. They've got teenager Dungeon and Dragons and teenage game night and had a teenage paint along with Bob Ross activities. Community centers are a great way to find activities. If your child is interested in something, if they go to a class with other people who are also interested in that thing, it's more likely that they'll make friends. If two kids go to the class they both want to be at, at least they have something of interest to talk about. Martial arts are another great one. There's Taekwondo, there's Karate, there's Jiu Jitsu, there's art classes in the community. So many things. YMCA is another great option. I've never joined, but I know they have swimming there and they have exercise classes and art classes and teen hangouts and things like that. 4 H is another great option. They have all sorts of different 4 H ones. It's not just about animals. Around here, I've seen ones for sewing, and ones for technology. And then of course, ones for rabbits or ones for livestock or whatever. So you can find things like that as well. If there's something that your child is really passionate about, you can Google whatever association, so like fabric association or sewing association in this area, and then see if they have anything like that you can join. You don't have to only join with kids your own age. It could be with grownups or older kids or whatever. Because really that's what socialization is, is dealing with people outside your group, outside your family outside your comfort zone. And the way schools are set up, it's just 
everyone is the same age each year. And that's not reality. You don't go to work and everyone's the same age. No, that's not how the real world is. So if they can associate with different groups and different age groups, that's wonderful. My kids are in a homeschool strings group. So once a week they go and they do violin and some kids do cello and some kids do harp and, and it's really fun and everyone loves it. You know, different things are available around you. One mom in the town next to us, she started a Pokemon meetup. So every other week she just, I don't know, she rents the this little community center place and then the kids go and for two hours they sit and trade Pokemon cards and they love it. I think it's boring but <laughs> my kids like it. It's great. Lots of talking and learning bartering and trading. So there's all sorts of things to do. You as a mom or dad can also start things. You could have a monthly poetry tea time at your house or a monthly survival thing at your house. Whatever you're passionate about, put out in the community. I'm sure other people would also like to come learn those things. Boy Scouts is another option or Girl Scouts or things like that. There's so many options available for your child to meet other people and learn social skills. So don't be put off by that question when you're homeschooling. Like, don't let that stop you. I hope this was helpful. Now, if you want to get some ideas for field trips, clear, clear for the next video. And please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.